Poor Cinda is enraged. I mean, when you have to clean the toilet of someone who just yelled at you and called you basically out your name, yeah, that would probably make me enraged too. Hi, everybody. This is Lady Sweet Tart, and welcome back to the Disney Princess Challenge. So I am so excited because we are finally recording our first episode of Cinderella in the castle. So as you can see, we are here with our dear Cinda. So she is up before everyone else in the house, which is pretty typical for her routine because she does have to get up. She has to prepare all the meals. So she has to have breakfast ready for when everyone else gets up. And of course, Lady Tremaine and her daughters love to sleep in. Looks like her brother has gotten up though, who does try to help as much as he can, but he doesn't exactly know how to cook. So he's really not a big help. But he has been helping a lot with the animals. But anyway, I want to go ahead and show you guys around because this is actually a different castle than where we recorded the last episode. Um, I did do a community post talking about it, but basically the old castle was not going to fulfill the needs that I needed to tell this story. Um, the biggest thing was I got this build off the gallery, but I also got the last one off the gallery. And for whatever reason, I've had this happen occasionally with other gallery builds. It would not let me build a basement. And I knew with the structure of who we were gonna have in the house, I was gonna need space in the basement. So I'm like, you know, I just need to get a different, different place. So anyway, we are now in this one, which actually looks a lot more like the traditional Cinderella castle. Um, it is in the same spot that it was before in Windenburg, but let me just kind of show you around really quick. So this is the entrance here. So as you go through the door here, um, you just kind of come into this grand entrance. Let me put this wall up. Um, very castle-y, I feel like. Most of this interior I did redo, just because I'm very particular about how <laughs> I like my builds to look and I end up redesigning things a lot, especially if I'm gonna be using them for a series. Um, so yeah, that is the main entryway. And then I think over here is like just a bathroom, yeah. And then as you go into this door, it's a little hallway. There's like a little computer desk. <laughs> There's the king's throne over here. And then this door over here leads into the kitchen, which obviously is a room that Cinda must spend a lot of time in because she does prepare all the meals for the castle. So I'll just kind of look around a little bit so you can see that. So this is the kitchen. And then as you go through the kitchen and you go in here, this is the formal dining room. And I did this all out super ritzy with the Chanel chairs because I thought that so seems like something that Lady Tremaine would want. She would definitely want like the most designer, flashy, like high-end stuff in her home. So I thought that was appropriate. It looks super duper fancy. I don't think most of the parties that we have though are gonna be here. It's just not enough space in terms of like ballroom dancing and things like that. I'm actually gonna be doing that somewhere in the basement, which I will show you guys. Um, but yeah, and then over here through, let me do this so you can see it a little bit better. But if you go through this way, this is their living room, which is actually a lot smaller than what I would like because when I picture like the front room of a castle, I would think it would be like a really big living room, but this is the space that we had. So I just kind of worked with it and I figured we're not gonna be spending a lot of time in here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, if you go into this door, it just takes you back out into this main area here. So whereas the other door over here leads to the little hallway in the kitchen, this one leads you to the sitting room, if you will. And then if you wanna go to the basement, you actually have to come, I believe it's over here. Yeah, you just have to walk outside and come down this way. And this is where many of the staff bedrooms are. So like the people who are on the serving staff, they actually sleep down here. So that's where Grumpy's room is. 
Um, you can see he's got this like pallet bed and very like rudimentary basic bathroom, like not a lot of creature comforts. Um, there are two other rooms because whilst Cinda doesn't sleep down here, there are other members of the serving staff, which we will also meet here in a minute. Um, Cinda actually sleeps, let me show you. I wanted to stay true to the Cinderella story and she stays up at the very top because I think in the Cinderella movie, she was meant to be in the attic, I wanna say, but it was definitely up towards the top of the castle and I remember it was like kind of a wooden room if I'm remembering it right. So I kind of wanted to keep that feel up here and as you can see, yeah, as I talked about, I did end up getting a little Bruno dog and I got that from the gallery. So I can't take credit for this adorable little doggy. I'm actually gonna screenshot up here for you the gallery page of Bruno. That way I can give credit to the creator of Bruno. So um, that should be on the screen for you right now. And my thinking was King Noel probably feels really bad about his daughter having to put up with Lady Tremaine. And so he thought, well, get her a dog, you know, let's adopt a dog. And so that's where Bruno came in. So Bruno is kind of like Cinda's dog, but Gavin does a lot to help take care of the animals. That's sort of like a lot of the work he does around here. Um, but yeah, if you go down below the top, well, let's go back to the bottom floor. I don't want to be confusing. So when you get back up to the first floor and then you go up on the second floor this is where Lady Tremaine and King Noel sleep like this is the master bedroom however it's all for appearances because as we know Lady Tremaine and King Noel's marriage is basically a business transaction so Lady Tremaine has her own little bed right here and as you can see her pet Lucifer sleeps right at the foot of her bed and King Noel has his own bed over here, his much plainer style bed. Um, and then Lady Tremaine has this like nice big bathroom here, with all the comforts. And then King Noel actually has his own little bathroom right here, which is a very basic kind of bathroom. Like she doesn't even let him use her bathroom. Um, I didn't actually do anything with this. This was already here. I didn't really see a need to do anything with it, but if you go up to the next floor, um, this is where Drizella and Anastasia's rooms are, and oh my goodness, can I just tell you what a nightmare it was <laughs> to try to fit in both of their bedrooms and give them both an ensuite bathroom, because I'm like, no way would they not have their own bathrooms, right? Like, Lady Tremaine would make sure of that. So, trying to get that with the space and with the shapes, it was a trial, let me tell you. And if you watch Cinderella, you probably know whose room is who because Anastasia wears pink. And so I kind of think of pink as Anastasia's color. So this right here is Anastasia's room, as you can see. And she does have her own little, very oddly shaped bathroom here. <laughs> but again, it was kind of hard to squeeze it in. And then over here across the hall is Drizella's room. And again, if you watch the movie, Drizella wears the color green. So I did her room up in green. And then she also has her own little bathroom over here. And then up above that is where Cinda sleeps. And of course she has a little pet bed here for Bruno. So that is the castle. Oh, and I was going to show you downstairs. I do plan this whole area here. I haven't built it yet, but for the next episode, we will have our first party. And I'm going to make this into basically a ballroom slash party room. I just didn't do it yet because I had so much else to do with the castle. And I'm like, we are not going to be having a party this episode anyway. So I decided to hold off on that. But yeah, that's basically the whole castle. But there are a couple of characters that I do want to introduce you to. So as you might imagine, in a castle, Gavin and Cinda are not the only people on the serving staff. So there is another brother and sister, and I did put them on the community page. So somebody did say they thought they might be brother and sister, so you were right. This is Gaol. And he is the brother, he's a little bit older, and his sister is also here, and I will see if I can find her. All right, this is her here. This is Gail's sister. She does not want to stay still, just like all of my Sims. And her name is Ara. So Gail and Ara, 
both work just like Gavin and Cinda do. They're both teens, and actually, their story is their mom had worked for King Noel at the castle for a very long time, and she recently passed away, and their father had already died, and so the kids basically had nowhere to go, and we know King Noel has a huge heart for kids, and he basically said, look, you guys can stay here, you can work here for us, and you have a place here at the castle. So that's the story behind Gaol and Ara. So they're both teens, just like Gavin and Cinda. And they have already, I believe they both already met them. Yeah, so she knows Ara and, oh, she hasn't known, she hasn't met Gaol yet. So, so we'll have to make sure she meets him since they all work together. But what I did basically in order to get them in the house was I used the roommates mod. Um, Little Miss Sam makes a roommate mod and you can add extra people to the house if you have the beds for them. You just can't control them. So I don't have any control over Gaol and Ara, but they do live here as roommates. <laughs> so if you see them acting not very servant-like, that's the reason why I really can't tell them what to do. Because as you can see with Lucifer and with Bruno, we are maxed out at eight people in the house. So I know that was a lot of introduction. Hopefully that was helpful to kind of see where we are at. Right now, Cinda is making the breakfast for the rest of the house. And she makes it her goal every morning to have the breakfast ready before Lady Tremaine gets up. Who she actually just got up. So Cinda just finished making lemon pancakes for everyone. And she is going to try to hurry up and have her portion before Lady Tremaine and her daughters come down and start putting her to work. Lucky for Cinda, they do like to sleep in. And Gavin has come up to give his sister a little bit of company. He does try to get up early as well, just to make sure if Cinda needs any help, he's able to help her. Because obviously he doesn't want her incurring the wrath of Lady Tremaine either. You know, we've talked about it before, but Gavin is very protective of his siblings. So, oh, and here's Lady Tremaine. You guys like barely made it. When they showed up the last time, Lady Tremaine was a little shocked that Cinda brought Gavin instead of Blair, but I actually think that Lady Tremaine might be a little bit happier with a boy showing up as opposed to a girl, because for one thing, there's already so many girls in the house, but I feel like Lady Tremaine would be one of those ladies that sees every other girl as competition, like whether it's competition for her or competition for her daughters, I could definitely see her being that type of woman. Like you probably know what I'm talking about. We've all met those kinds of women and I feel like Lady Tremaine would be like that. However, I don't know if she knows exactly who she's dealing with, with Gavin's temper. It says that Cinda is chatting with Gaol, so maybe she's finally meeting him. I thought I had seen her talking to him before. So Gaol, as you could probably guess from his look, he's a little bit rebellious. Um, he's not really supposed to in a castle. He is wearing the right uniform, but he's not supposed to <laughs> wear like his piercings and stuff. Lady Tremaine hates that, but he really doesn't care and he he kind of likes getting under Lady Tremaine's skin. He can't stand her. So he just does it anyway. <laughs> so that kind of gives you an idea of what Gaol is like. I definitely see him and Gavin becoming fast friends. And oh, forgot to say, I did put a community post up about it, but in case you missed it, I did have Cinda dye her hair brown because my thinking was, I mean, look at this girl's face. She looks so much like her dad. And I was thinking that Lady Tremaine might be a little bit concerned that people might put together that she is King Noel's daughter. And so she thought, you know, if maybe she doesn't have the blonde hair that King Noel has. She'll look a little bit less like him. So that was what my thinking was. And I thought, you know, she wouldn't want her to dye her hair black or red because uh, that's the hair color her daughters have. And of course she wants her daughters to look as unique and distinctive as possible and stand out. So that's why I went with brown. But I actually think it looks pretty good on her. Aw, uh, her sister's calling her. How sweet is that? I wish we could. Oh, and no, she's calling Gavin. I mean, it makes sense. Gavin's her twin. But no, we're really busy at the castle. I'm sorry, Harper Happy. 
I mean, she seems to be having a pretty good conversation with Gaol here. I hope Lady Tremaine doesn't catch them resting on their laurels instead of working around the castle. So she thinks he's funny. Doesn't look like he has a sentiment about her, but she thinks he is funny. But Senda, I think, honey, I'm going to have to get you to get back to work because we don't want Lady Tremaine to catch you not working. So you probably need to come in here and start cleaning everything up. And Gavin, I know it's raining, but I think what you're going to want to do, since you're kind of in charge of the pets, is I'm going to have you take Bruno here out for a little jog. And you like that kind of thing anyway because you're all into the fitness thing. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Gaol is pretty bold. He has an absolute distaste for Lady Tremaine, which just makes us like him more, right? And I was going to try to see if I could find his sister. But yeah, as I was saying, um, Gaol is very bold and a little bit rebellious, whereas his sister Ara here, um, she is really shy and almost kind of timid. And she's she's so timid, she's disappearing from me. But she's very sweet. So she's almost a little bit of the opposite of her brother, Gaol. But I would guess she's probably pretty grateful to have someone like Cinda around to help her with the stuff around the house. Because I get the feeling that her brother, Gaol, is not exactly <laughs> the most hardworking of the serving staff. But I just absolutely love how she turned out. Like, I just think she's so adorable. Poor Gavin is outside in the rain doing his duties by taking care of Bruno and going on a run in the pouring rain. But hey, Gavin, you sure do look nice doing it. And it is a Sunday. There is no school today. So Cinda basically is just spending her day just cleaning up things around the house. Truth be told, I think Lady Tremaine would probably make her stay home from school if she could, but there's laws against that in King Knoll's kingdom, so she does get to go to school still. So Cinda is in the kitchen, cleaning up as usual, and Drizella starts yelling at her, saying, you know, you aren't doing a good enough job keeping my room clean. You know, there's makeup on my vanity, and I expect you to keep my room spick and span, or I'm going to complain to my mom about you. And she already doesn't like you. And as you can see up here, they have a very bad relationship. <laughs> they really, really dislike each other, as she dislikes Grumpy, but though not as much. But needless to say, Drizella takes pretty much any opportunity she can to yell at and scold Cinda. She doesn't like her. She's honestly a little bit jealous of her beauty. And she's just mean. She just likes being mean to her. But to Cinda's credit, it looks like she's giving her a little bit back. Which she should probably watch because she doesn't want to get on Lady Tremaine's bad side. So Cinda, probably you should go up and clean Drizella's room. Yeah, her vanity does look a little mess. So I'm basically just having her come up and just clean everything in Drizella's room that she can clean. So afterwards, Drizella is coming out to complain to Anastasia about Cinda. She's like, can you believe that Cinda girl? She is so worthless. She thinks she's so much better and so much prettier than we are. I just can't stand her. We hate her, don't we, Anastasia? And I think Anastasia's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we don't like her. You're right. Because she has definitely learned over the years that the best way to keep her sister calm is to just kind of agree with everything she says. So Anastasia does have a bad relationship with Gavin and with Cinda, but it's not nearly as bad as Drizella's relationship with Cinda is. She basically doesn't like Cinda just because her mom and her sister have told her not to like Cinda. She doesn't actually have anything personal against her. And oh my goodness, poor Cinda is enraged. I mean, when you have to clean the toilet of someone who just yelled at you <laughs> and called you basically out your name, yeah, that would probably make me enraged too. It's not an easy life, Cinda, but nobody told you it would be. I do feel bad for her though. So it's after dinner now and Cinda is cleaning up from everyone having their meal and it looks like Gaol has come in to help her. 
And Gail has noticed that Cinda is pretty stressed out. You know, she had this big argument with Drizella earlier, and her fun is pretty low. And he's like, hey, um, you look like you really need some fun. And Cinda's reacting like, are we even allowed to have fun here? And he's like, well, I don't know if we're allowed to have fun, strictly speaking. But technically, it's time for everyone to go to bed, which means we're kind of off for the night. So I thought maybe I could show you my favorite place to hang out around the castle at nighttime. And Cinda is pretty desperate for some fun, and she's been getting along with Gale pretty well so far. So she's going to take him up on that. So after everyone else has gone up to bed, Gail takes her out here to the gardens behind the castle. And I think Cinda's pretty hyped because, let's face it, it's pretty gorgeous back here. Oh my goodness, there's even like a butterfly here. How Disney is that? So Cinda and Gail start doing a little bit of cloud gazing. And he's asking Cinda how things are going at the castle so far. You know, he's like, it seems like you are fitting in pretty well. I mean, obviously he doesn't know that she is the king's daughter. And Cinda's like, yeah, I guess I kind of am, except for Lady Tremaine and her daughters. And Gail is like, ugh, don't even worry about that. Nobody likes them. He's telling her like, Lady Tremaine is such a B word. <laughs> and her daughters aren't much better. He's like, they're always coming up, especially Drizella, and she's like flirting with me, and she bats her eyelashes at me, even though I know she looks down on me because I'm just a member of the serving staff. And Cinda's asking him, like, I take it you're not flattered by her attention? And he's like, ah, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> he really doesn't like Lady Tremaine and her daughters. And so they're just kind of gossiping about everyone at the castle. And Gail brings up the king and he's like, you know, I really have so much respect for the king, even though I can't stand his wife. You know, King Noel has been kind to me and my sister in so many ways. And Cinda finds out about how his mom had died. And before that, his father had died and basically left him and Ara as orphans. And, you know, he's telling Cinda, you know, he knows that they could have just, that King Noel could have just kicked them out. But, you know, he's like, you know, King Noel was really cool. He let us stay here and work and live at the castle. So I just think a lot of King Noel. She also finds out in the conversation that all of Gail's tattoos actually came from his father. Before his father died, he was a tattoo artist and he gave him his tattoos when he became a teen. Because I kind of feel like it's a little unusual, at least where I live, for teenagers to have tattoos. So I thought I should probably explain how he got his. And then Gail shows her the maze section of the gardens and they end up having a little balloon fight, which is probably helping Cinda's fun a little bit. <laughs> I would imagine. Oh my goodness. Wow, Cinda, you're savage. You just went right for his face. But he doesn't seem to mind. In fact, I think their relationship has come up pretty high. Oh, I see. He's trying to hide behind this wall now. I don't think I've ever actually had my Sims come out and do a water balloon fight, to be honest. It's actually kind of cute. But as it often does with teenagers, that little playfulness kind of turns into some flirtation and they get a little bit of romance. Truth be told, I kind of feel like Gaul had his eye on Cinda from the time she came to the castle and he's basically telling her, you know, she is the most beautiful girl he has ever seen and that he had the most fun night ever with her tonight. He's laying it on a little strong, but I just think he's quite smitten with Cinda. And she doesn't seem to mind the attention, to be honest. She definitely seems interested as well. However, it is 5 in the morning and it is a school day, so and it looks like people are up, so Cinda had better get her behind inside and make breakfast for everyone. Goodness knows she doesn't need something else to anger Lady Tremaine over with her. Also, I'm thinking school's not going to be all that much fun for her today since she stayed out all night. But something tells me, judging from the look on Cinda's face, that she feels like the night out was worth it. And did you notice she sneezed just a little bit ago? How perfect is that, since she's our sneezy dwarf? Also, Grumpy is quite flirty right now. What is that all about? 
So it says, oops, from Dream, I didn't know that things would go that far with my crush. Grumpy, what were you dreaming about? <laughs> that was some dream. So who is his crush? I think that would be interesting to find out. So let's look at his relationship panel. See if we can sleuth out who his crush might be. Could be Ara. I, I mean, he has dislike with Anastasia, and I think he has dislike with Giselle. Yeah, so I'm kind of thinking it's not them. And then it looks like pretty much everybody else he knows is are, are his siblings. I mean, except for these guys, but I think they're like adults. Yeah, that's a young adult, and that's an adult. So I hope it's not them. I'm thinking it's got to be Ara. So what does it say? Oh, talk about some tea. Ara's sentiments about Gavin Grumpy. First impression, crush. So Ara has a little crush on Mr. Gavin Grumpy. I mean, I can't say as I blame her. And she also thinks he's interesting. He thinks she is responsible. And he does perceive her as extremely attractive. So I think we figured out who Gavin's crush is. It's Miss Ara. Oh, and speaking of, here's Miss Ara right here. I was going to say she doesn't seem to be giving much of an indication that she has a crush on Gavin, but like I said before, she is really shy. In fact, I think I gave her its custom trait. I can't remember if it's bashful or shy, but I definitely gave her that trait. So she'd probably be like extra sure not to show things. Oh, did you see that look that Gail just gave Cinda? He kind of gave her this little knowing stare. Oh, but that's sweet. He came over to hug his sister too. And I think Gavin is over like trying to quietly ask his sister, like, what the heck were you doing all night? Lucifer is over here eating. Oh, wonderful. Totally a Lucifer thing to do, though. So it is almost time for the kids to go to school, so I'm just having Cinda clean up really quick because obviously things have to be spotless before she's allowed to go to school. Okay, so all the kids are going to school. Now, you will notice that Drizella and... Anastasia have school uniforms. That's because they don't go to the same school that Gavin and Cinda and Ara and Gail go to. They go to an exclusive private school that's supposed to be the best for preparing you for university. But of course, Lady Tremaine wouldn't think of allowing Cinda or Gavin to go to that school. That's out of the question. So just as I predicted, the kids have about 15 minutes left of school and Cinda is exhausted, like to the point where she has circles under her eyes and her fun is disastrously low again. Poor Cinda though, she definitely looks dead on her feet and she still has things to do around the castle. So what I think I'm actually gonna do is I think I'm going to get her some potions, a sleep replacement potion and which is the one that helps their fun. I think there's a fun one, I think. Instant fun. Oh, that's only 100 simoleons, awesome. Because I was gonna say, I have a feeling with all the work she has to do around the castle, I feel like this is gonna be a common occurrence with Cinda that her fun gets low. Aw, there you go. Bruno will always make you feel better. Also, I like how Gail is not so subtly standing nearby. But I feel like, sweetie, before you embarrass yourself, <laughs> especially with the cute boy next to you, um, I think you need to go and take a shower. You know, a really quick one that Lady Tremaine doesn't notice. She would not be happy that you'd come home and do that instead of work. So Drizella has invited her boyfriend over. This is Prince Louie. And he obviously goes to the same school as Drizella, the same exclusive school. He is a prince, and so therefore, in Lady Tremaine's eyes, a very suitable match for her daughter, Drizella. He doesn't look super thrilled to be over here with her, but I mean, Drizella's not the nicest. Yes, I think Gavin Grumpy probably would like hip-hop music. But as they're talking, Prince Louis's like, um, is this the new serving staff girl that I've heard you complain so much about? <laughs> but I think Drizella is one of those people that as much of a B word as she is, she doesn't want her boyfriend to know how mean she is. So she's like, oh yeah, uh, Cinda, come over and introduce yourself. This is my fantastic boyfriend, Prince Louis. And Prince Louis, unlike Drizella, actually has some social skills. 
So he decides to make some polite conversation with Cinda, and he's like, I hear you're the one that makes all the meals around here. And he also is like, you know, one... I also hear that the quality of the meals is so much better now that you're here. Because, like I said, Prince Louis does have a little bit of class and some culture, and he's probably grasping in his mind, like, what is the one nice thing that I've actually heard Drizella say about this girl? And it was, she's a great cook. And one of the reasons he's so interested to talk about that with her is in the school that Drizella and Anastasia and Prince Louis go to, they kind of get to specialize in some areas, and Prince Louis's area of interest is actually cooking. So they find themselves talking a lot about recipes and cooking techniques because they're both super into cooking. I don't think Drizella is very happy <laughs> about the fact that they've hit off a conversation about cooking. But again, she kind of is aware of the image she presents to her boyfriend. She doesn't want to come off like the meanie that she actually is. Oh, and she's got a sentiment with him. Okay, you both find each other interesting, and they're closer from happy memories. But speaking of cooking, it is 6.30 at night, and uh, my dear, I think you need to get dinner ready for everyone. But anyway, I am going to go ahead and end the episode here. Next time, we are going to be throwing our very first party at the castle. Which, of course, Gavin and Cinda and Gaul and Ara are all going to be expected to work at instead of have fun at. But let me know in the comments what you thought of today's episode and what you think about life at the castle so far. I have to say, I had so much fun doing this episode. I think sometimes when you're playing, it's just nice to have a little different change of pace and she sneezed again. You know, instead of playing in the same place all the time. It kind of changes it up a little bit. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Drop a comment below. I always love hearing what you have to say. It honestly makes my day. You all are amazing. I'll see you later. Bye.